Television and the program is First the Nation. My name is Obre Kusakala. Remember, we discuss various issues here. We discuss politics, human rights, religion, education, health, economy, etc. The reason is we make sure that Malawi is at that high level in as far as the execution of all these things are concerned. This program is coming to you under the auspices of RSG Travel. So our guest is Mr. Timothy Ntambo, the chairperson of HRDC, Human Rights Defenders Coalition. Shortly, we'll be talking to him, but firstly, let's hear from RSG Travel. We are RSG Travel. For the most competitive fares booked through us to any destination, we are reliable in hotel bookings and number one in procuring Morocco and Thai visas. Travel insurance is optional and we operate 24-7 to meet your needs. RSG Travel is in Sunbird Longwe Hotel. For more details, call Kate on 0997-700-126 or Griffin on 0999-340-452. Email rsgtravel.mw at gmail.com. RSG Travel. Service all the way. Welcome back. Remember, this is Obre Kusakala. The program is First the Nation. Welcome in, Mr. Mtambo. Now, Mulbach. Tiribu. 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 Most of my childhood in Zambia. Of course, So you're not from DRC? I'm not from DRC. You're not from Zambia? I'm not from you're pure Zambia. malaria? I'm a pure malaria. I did my uh, part of my primary uh, education uh, mm -hmm. here in Malawi. Okay. I did all my secondary school education here in Malawi. Mm -hmm. I did all my university studies here in Malawi. Mm -hmm. What were you university studying at Chama? Um, I, I did uh, a part of arts mm -hmm. and uh, I, I specialized in, 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 in politics, philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I uh, mind that uh, democracy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, normally, uh, when people start judging others mm -hmm. to say they don't belong to that country, mm -hmm. uh, you you literally see that they have run short of ideas. My chichua is for sure better than that of Peter Mdalika. <laughs> so Peter Mdalika should be uh, the first for your stage outside Malawi more than me. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is to judge that all the people that are the privilege to stay outside the country they are not Malawians, mm. they are actually more Malawians than even Peter Mutalina. So MBC should rethink their strategies when they are trying to do this. But I'll take it up. And I'm not taking it right, right because if somebody says I'm not a citizen, then they must prove. Is that a threat? This is a big threat and actually I'm, I'm not even regretting saying this because for people to say I'm not a citizen, then they must bring evidence to show that I'm not a citizen. But I'm a proud Malawian 
and I'm going to continue fighting for, for Malawi. For better Malawi. Gagare we na funa sa funa. We are going to stand up for this country because the whole thing, the whole people, the general, the school, 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 the from primary, secondary, and university. At Chancellor College, I was a student unionist. I was a leader in the union. And I did my part during my time. So I, I, I was born, I've grown up an activist. And this is the thing no one can take away from me. How many because years did you spend at Chancellor? I spent uh, four years. When, when was this? Uh, it, it was between 2006 to, to 2009. Ah, yeah. just recently. Yeah, 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 in fact, uh, yeah, you're, you're 10 years older after graduating. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you, so this uh, is the youth generation. We are, we are actually a new generation and you, we are focused for a better Malawi. So you're telling me you're not a politician, but you're an activist. I'm not a politician. Meaning we won't see you in the next coming years joining politics? I don't think I'll be discussing um, my next moves. We, we are in a very evil society. Evil society. That, uh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Meaning, we, we, we see people who do not sleep every day. They are planning on how best they can destroy others. So, um, are you I'm, one of them I'm, planning to destroy others? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm here to deal with it. I believe um, the country cannot become with any society if we do not build each other. Even the whole work we do, um, people think we are against government. We are not. Our work is actually to make our government do better. Because if the government fails, we all have failed. So um, I talk about those people issuing threats against us. People talking they go, they are going to deal with us. People openly saying they hate us. You know, those are the people I'm saying that uh, they should stop wasting time. Is it's this, time for it, us to get together it, it, and unify for a better Malawi. Is this why you have employed some bouncers to protect you? No, no, I don't have. I don't have even a single bouncer. You I don't, don't have a single bouncer. Aren't you I, hiring I, bouncers to beat up people no, in no, the streets? No, 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 I can't do that. My job is to protect people and I cannot beat any human being. These are the things that uh, I'm talking about, that people work so hard to destroy others. Somebody lied, lied this entry and he was posting all over social media. I never touched the person and I can't do that. But he did that with an objective of tarnishing my image. I know a lot more is to come, but, but one thing that I can assure them that some of us will never, never sell this country on the order of selfishness. Mm -hmm on the order of greed, we are going to stand together with the people, no matter how difficult it will be. You know, when you are standing on justice, people can do all they can do, but God of justice will always be with you. I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, and <laughs> which, which, which I, I believe in God, I'm, I'm an Adventist. Okay. I'm an Adventist. Mpesa? Yes. You, you yourself, Mpesa. Mpesa. Mpesa unuwe ni jitu. Hine ndi Mpesa. Kwa sababu yosa ni pingo. Andi chosirazi. Jimene ndu pangazi. Murungu mkatumune mpaipo mmoja. Lida wina wadi yense mu Old Testament. Kukangu ubwela chisoko nezo zintisizi kuenda kuinu. Murungu wa matumi zama profit. You see? Tawe ya china David. Ama wela profit kuza mpanga uoni. Murungu zimene zisa kusanga hanazo. Nde ino di. Yes. This is a noble cause. Prophet. The work that we do, I can't say I'm a prophet, but the work that we do, we do the work that is there to help the people of God. If you're fighting corruption, I'm helping the people of God. Prophet in Tambo. You see, <laughs> whatever people might call me. Maybe in Chiti Baba. Some people even call me a uh, politician. Uh, I'm not a politician. You, you just alluded to that, mm -hmm. and I know strongly you talked about that because maybe some people are saying, ah, I want done that. People say this, you know what? They talk about this. These are politicians. Ah, they are masquerading themselves as civil society. 
we, we, we are not politicians, but as a, a student of political philosophy, mm. I will tell you that man is a political animal. Plato said this, you cannot detach a human being from politics. You cannot detach a human being from economics. Mm -hmm. You cannot detach a human being from social issues. Okay. So, when in a democracy, we are called to duty to be active citizens. Citizens who participate actively in the governance of their own country. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, by being an active citizen, it doesn't mean that I'm an active politician. I'm a civil society activist. I'm a civil rights activist. And my job mm. is actually to complement the work of the government. So when I'm fighting corruption, mm. which means I'm helping the government to fight corruption. So if the, the government employ people to fight me because I'm fighting corruption, which means that government is a corrupt government and wants to be promoting corruption. G getting it from you, Mr. Ntambo, it seems you started this activism uh, right back in your college days. When Not in you... college, secondary, hmm? primary, secondary, school. secondary school. Primary school. Yeah, I've been in the student leadership throughout my life. In, in Udovuda, right? Eh? No, since Udovuda, but uh, I have a conviction that in the society we live, we have to be, live better. Definitely, if you talk of primary school, that means you are speaking to teachers at that level. Of course, of course. And the same went to secondary school. Of course. And then university. All the people I've been with in, in, in my school time, they'll tell you. That you it miss. has been always been the same, and when people say talk about buying, selling each other, people sell their souls. Activists, you see them today active, tomorrow they're puppets, mm. they're dancing to the tune of of, of those that are, uh, you know, those that are actually stealing from people. But my, my question was leading to this: When did you start active activism, actually talking to government leaders, those who are in power? It's during my, my, my college, okay. when I was in a student leader at Chancellor College, mm -hmm. that's when we started engaging government seriously. Mm -hmm. Actually, I could come, leave Zomba, I would come to Lilongwe, mm. meeting leadership at the Capitol Hill. Okay. Uh, the PAs, the, and the ministers and everyone. You could go uh, and cause havoc. Ex yeah. Not cause havoc, but question them on issues to do with student welfare. So, um, I remember there was a moment that, uh, uh, as a student leader, we were also once, once arrested because we were pushing for justice. And, uh, you know, there were no issues, always. <laughs> you, so, so you went to a police cell? People would just come, uh, they, they took us to, 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 to police cell and every, everything. Actually, I was not uh, uh, arrested. In you the were state, detained for in, how many hours? In the, for two days, three days. Wow. So what happened was that uh, some of our students were arrested. So as leaders, we said, no, you can't pick our students. We know the students have done nothing. So we literally went with, with the students in solidarity. Mm. When we got there, the officer in charge, I don't remember his name, he received a call from the Capitol Hill, actually from the State House. Mm. And that call was to instruct him to say, arrest the leaders. Who was the president then? Bingo. It was during Bingo. And actually, literally I saw, and the, this person telling me to say, I'm sorry, I've been told that uh, you should also be arrested. So you were hard on Bingo's government then? Not, not to say we were hard on Bingo. Bingo's government, we're advising Bingo, Bingo's government to do better, just like we have done with all the governments. Joyce, Joyce Banders regime? Very much so. We, we, we were very much tough during the time of Kashket. We, we never gave her space. And miraculously, during Joyce Banders regime, um, I was being invited at MBC to, uh, to be the guest doing interviews attacking the government. You, you call it miraculously? Yeah, because the MBC is not a space for anyone that is attacking government. That is what they have taught us. So I was shocked that time I could be invited by some of the boys that are attacking me now. They could invite me and I could be critiquing the Joyce Banders government and they will invite me again. You see, okay. so I, I, I was being invited mostly by uh, also Garrett. Okay. Of course, I didn't know that it had some ties with, the, with Bingo. 
uh, so I used to go there. And uh, as an activist, I was calling a spade a spade, attacking all issues of Kashkade and the like. It's later on when I discovered that it belonged to... So I said, oh, is it the reason why they were calling me? And I was hitting uh, George Banda's government on those issues. Hardly. But the same people, when Peter Mutarika came in and we were questioning issues, uh, they said, again. you were questioned, you were so quiet during Joyce Banda, said, God should forgive you. You were the people, we, you were inviting me, and today you say we were quiet. I, I just said, God should forgive you. Why do you hate the DPP government? I don't hate the DPP government. I don't. I don't hate the DPP government. Um, actually, if there is a government that I love, it's this one. Why do you say so? Because I'm asking because you're always attacking the TPP government. We are Come not... with issues of electricity, you're there, you make noise. Come to issues of uh, corruption, you're always there to make noise. But corruption has been there, blackouts have been there. Issues to do with shortages of water in the cities, you're always there making noise. Why do you hate the Democratic Progressive Party leadership? <laughs> Yeah, I think that is misinformation. I, you have just mentioned the issues. I hate what they do, not what they are. The issues. When you look at corruption, I attack issues of corruption because is corruption good for this country? Can you answer me? No, 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 I can. No. Uh, I'm supposed to be asking you questions. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we need to be interacting. This is yeah, yes, we are. We are. Is corruption we good? <laughs> answer, answer this question. <laughs> Comrade, just answer me this question. Is corruption Mr. good? Mr. I won't answer any of your questions. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it. but in my thinking, I attack evils of the society. Okay. Corruption, mm -hmm. you know, um, which contributes to a lot of evils, lack of medicines in the hospital, lack of potable water mm. by our people, mm. lack of uh, proper uh, education facilities, mm. you know, you know corruption is eating our society. So the, 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 this animal we hate so much. Mm. So when we're attacking this thing to say this is bad, it doesn't mean that we don't like the government. And some people said you hate the president. I said the president? Why should I hate my president? When somebody is, is, is a president, we all have to say this is our president. You understand? As long as that person has been voted, uh, to you and do that? Has, been, has been voted in, a, in a, a transparent and credible manner. You understand? I attack, uh, you know, uh, rigging. If you attack we, rigging we, we, in we, we're heading there. Is that wrong? We're heading there. You see, don't, so, don't worry wh about so it. what I would like to say in short to say, I, I, I have no issues with the government. I have no issues with DPP. I have no issues with the president. Mm. Actually, love the president so much to the extent that, uh, you know, I've never even met him in person. Do you talk to him? Maybe on the phone? No, no, no. I've never talked to him. Since? And he, and, and how can a person say you hate someone you have never even... You know, for you, hate, hate is a very strong way. You know, these things do not exist in my vocabulary. They don't? I love people. If somebody is wrongly attacking the president, actually I'll fight for the rights of the president. Mm -hmm. I fight for the rights of everyone. Mm -hmm. You understand? So to say when we're attacking these wrongdoings, then we hate the president and we hate the DPP, we hate the government. No, that is totally untrue. Because when somebody becomes a leader and the, uh, the party goes in power, those we have entrusted our, 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 you know, our rights in them to say they, are, they should carry the development agenda mm. for us as a country. Mm. So for me, it is totally wrong to think when we are fighting wrong things, then we hate the people. Let's, let's begin to divide the two. Mm -hmm. Let's not mix the two. And uh, MBC, my advice is, they should start building this country by airing programs that will unite this country, airing programs that will ensure that our, our people are in love. Malawi is a small country. You know, there is a lot of hatred now because of their behavior. So they should rethink, and I'm advising uh, the DPP, 
um, and 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 MBC to say the best we can do now is to change our way of doing things. We should be able to engage as a people, as a country, and build our people rather than fighting. That, that reminds me. Uh, where is your friend Billy Meyer? He's around. He's in town. He stopped being vocal. No, Peter is. is, is you you, is, you is, muted is the, him. No, no, no. Peter is the chairman uh, for Central Region Human Rights Defenders Coalition. He's chairing the whole Central Region. And where's Gift? Gift is around. He's around. He's, he's, he's my vice chairman, <laughs> vice national chairman. Okay. So Mr. comrades Mr. are on the ground and they're doing a commendable job. If there are people that I pray for every day, mm. these are the people. Okay. That they take a risk. Mm. to stand for the voiceless. No matter how many people might hate them, no matter how much propaganda somebody can deploy, these are the people that have seen that they have stood up with us. We have been together from, from Bakiri, Bingu, until now. Mm. These guys are standing, but we had a lot of friends who migrated. They have migrated. Any government, if a new government comes, they migrate. Mm. The new government comes, they migrate. Mm. You know, that's their life. They end their you living. You used to be friends with Peter Banda. Peter Banda, yeah, of, of Malawi Watch. Of, of course, he's, he's, he's still my friend. I, I don't hate him, but he, what happened he, to your friends? There is nothing. But he, since he he decided to to start uh, preaching a different message from me, then we cannot be close. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that I hate him or have issues with him. But uh, you know, when you are your friend. You need to have a common agenda and a common vision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Peter Banda um, has um, transformed to a different agenda, but um, we're still in the we are we're still in the same agenda. We are remnants okay. in the game. So we continue working for the people mm -hmm. and for the benefit of the people. Otherwise, if we were that weak, we should have been migrating. You know, people go to governments because they know there is money. That's why you see even MPs migrating from the opposition going to government mm. because they want access to money. Ever but been offered money before by government? Um, offers mm. will always come, but the question is: Have you ever uh, accepted and changed? Have you ever answer? been offered money it's, by government? Yes or no? Um, you know what I can say is that. Um, Money has been offered to, 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 to those that actually are raising dissenting views. And if you have been raising dissenting views, it follows. But the question is um, whether you are offered the money you accept and you mute. So I yes, never, you have been offered, but you have never accepted. Never. Why? Okay. Answer me why. Why, why should After I After this that? break. Yeah. After this break, yeah. okay, answer me why you have not accepted the offers being given on the table. That's Mr. Timothy Mtambo, our guest in this program, First the Nation. He's the chairperson of the Human Rights Defenders Coalition. And remember, the program is coming to you under the auspices of RSG Travel. We are going to go for a brief commercial break and then we'll come back later to continue with the chat with him. Stay right there. RSG Travel. For the most competitive fares book through us to any destination. We are reliable in hotel bookings and number one in procuring Morocco and Thai visas. Travel insurance is optional and we operate 24-7 to meet your needs. RSG Travel is in Sunbird Longwe Hotel. For more details, call Kate on 0997-700-126 or Griffin on 0999-340-452. Email rsgtravel.mw at gmail.com. RSG Travel. Service all the way. Welcome back to the program. Remember, this is First Nation right here on Rainbow Television. My name is Obre Kusakala, and my guest is Mr. Timothy Mtambo, the chairperson of the Human Rights Defenders Coalition, HRDC, and we are discussing various issues. Remember briefly, we had uh, 
demonstrations in the country, protests all over the country. The 20th of June 2019, we saw thousands and thousands of people in the roads protesting against whatsoever has happened in relation to the 21st of May tripartite elections. Mr. Mtam, before we get in there, why haven't you been able to accept the said money offers? Um, because I'm not for sale. You're not for sale. A simple. I'm not for sale and Malawians are not for sale. When somebody offers you money that you should keep quiet, it means they want you to betray the voices, the masses. You know, what, what's the point that I've got millions to myself when millions of people are suffering? You know, some people fail even to get blessings because of such a behavior. You see all these people that uh, changes foro governments here and there. You see them that sometimes you find they are living a very miserable life. Very miserable life, yet they were given peanuts. Mm. You know, if you are to get blessings, you have to stand by your principles. Okay. You have to stand by your values. Okay. You accept the money that is stolen from you. It's like somebody is stealing money from you and gives money to you. So it, it's, it's doom. Mm -hmm. it you, you call it doom. doom. For, for, for me, I can tell you the truth to say, um, it's the betrayal of the highest order mm -hmm. to the people and to yourself. Mm. If somebody is giving me money to say, uh, I think you, it, it, I'm giving you this as, as a gift, uh, probably, I see you are doing a good job. This is the money so that it can empower you to do more. Mm. That man I will accept. Mm -hmm. You understand? Somebody is giving me money to say you are doing a good job. This is the money so that you can do more job. You should have uh, more projects on the ground to empower people. You should raise awareness on the people, on, on the importance of good governance, uh, evils of corruption, mm. evils of mob justice, mm. all those issues. I'll accept that money because I'm educating our people and we're trying to organize our society. So but if somebody so... brings the money mm -hmm. to say, ah, you know, this is the money, can you keep quiet? I'll, I'll, I'll not accept that. You didn't want to keep quiet. Why should I keep quiet when wrong things are happening? Because when you are quiet, you actually uh, become a complex. You are also part of the problem. Mm. So do I really want to be part of the problem? The answer is no. I want to be part of the solution. Those that are saying, okay, how can we help our government do better? How can we work together with the government to, 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 to change our, the, to, to better the lives of our people? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of inequalities in our society. Young people are struggling. You know, young people are struggling, there is unemployment, people cannot start the businesses. You know, the ground is not leveled in Malawi to the extent that hard work no longer pays. Those that work hard are the ones suffering. Those that do not work hard are the ones actually benefiting, leaping where they did not sow. So that is the mentality we want to change. We want a better society. A society where everyone should feel important that they're part of this country. So if somebody brings the money and says, can you keep quiet? I would say, to hell with your money. If somebody brings the money to say, can you help to organize this society, mm -hmm. to unify this society, to fight the evils of the society, I'll actually accept that money. So it is true that um, you're in the civil society to enrich yourselves and then use Malawians in a bad way. Where are you getting that fallacy? Because for me that is fallacy. Is it a fallacy? It is a big fallacy. Very big fallacy. Because if I wanted to, to, to enrich myself, I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been in civil society. Go all over the world. If you want to, to be rich, mm. go to business. Do business. Actually, I should have been doing business by now. But I spend much of, of my time even putting my life at risk for the people. Mm -hmm. N not because I love money. So but it's not true, you're not enriching yourself, you're not getting donor money. That's where I have a problem when, um, 
we start focusing on cheap propaganda. That's basically cheap propaganda that is being cooked by the government. That's why we have a problem. You know, when, when you have a government, it hires people to be writing false news, spreading false rumors, you know, there is a problem. Because the biggest beneficiary of even donor money mm. is actually the government. Oh. The government is, is, is funded. Don't you see the government crying when donors cross their taps? So should we say that the government, governments are there just to enrich themselves? <laughs> Those resources are given so that the resources should go to the people. So when somebody wants to take the same resources to put in their pockets, then we say that is not, not, not good. It is immoral. You see what I mean? So my, my job is not to make money. My job is to protect the rights of the people, to fight for the people, mm -hmm. to speak for the voiceless, to help this country become better, to, to be the agent of change, mm -hmm. somebody that can contribute to his country, to better our country. That's my job. When a donor gives us a money to say, go and implement a project, for instance, in Tioro, a, a project to promote good governance, a project to fight against child marriages, that money is meant to better the society. Mm -hmm. You understand? In foreign countries, governments fund such projects. In US or wherever in Europe, the, the government is the one which funds CSOs. It's the government that funds NGOs. You see, that's why you have NGOs like Action Aid, Oxfam. They're funded from their countries. Mm -hmm. You understand? But here, the government looks at NGOs and CSOs as enemies. So all they can do is to start cooking laws and policies that will make sure that NGOs, they don't have the voice. All they can do is to start employing some mercenaries to say, can you demonize these NGOs? So the target is for us to stop speaking for us to stop fighting for our country mm. but one thing that we have resolved to say we know that the struggle will not be smooth mm -hmm. but we are going to stand for this country wow. no matter how difficult it will be and my message to those that plan evil in the darkness against us my message to them is that we plan whatever we do in Planning the light in the and we believe evil cannot supersede justice evil cannot supersede the heavenly justice. This, I'll, I'll repeat, we believe light is more powerful than darkness. Because when people are saying we're going to finish you, is that not evil? When people are saying, uh, now, tikumenya, is that not well, evil? Well, I Pay attention and listen to programs well, on MBC. Well, you know, we refuse to live in our country as if we are visitors. We are not visitors in Malawi. We are going to stay in Malawi whether somebody likes it or not. Okay. Some people even deliberately advise, no, I think your security is good. It's better you leave this country. So you want me to leave this country for who? For this is my country. Probably for Zambia or DRC. <laughs> no, no, this is my country. I'll be here. And uh, anything that happens to, um, to activists in this country, we know who to point at. Mm -hmm. The one who is issuing threats or hold such a person accountable. I, I didn't ask you this personal question. How old are you, Mr. Ntoto? You, you are asking questions like the next make chair. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the make chair asks someone, a journalist, who asks a very innocent question to say, how old are you? <laughs> how far do you go with education? <laughs> I, I hope you don't go to my education. No, 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 we have gone there already. It will end in, we are, we in, have. It will end on how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> because in my education, I didn't go. I didn't finish. Now, I'm looking so. at you the way you're speaking, the years you've spent in the university, and I'm looking at your age. How old are you? Aren't you scared of your life? This is why I'm asking this question. And I think Actually, it's pregnant. In, in August, I'm turning 35. August 35. Yeah, I'm turning 35. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was born in 19, 1984. 84. Yeah. Wow. Okay, um, you mobilized Malawians to yes. go on the street and your main reason, if I got it well, was to force the MEC chair to resign. What are the reasons, what are the grounds and why you're saying 
MEC Chair, Dr. Jane Ansa, has to resign. Um, uh, actually, our demands were even extending to other commissioners. Mm -hmm. Not just her. We said her. You want the whole commission to go? Yeah. You know, we entrusted in their hands our trust to say, can you please run the elections? Let me tell you one thing. An election is a process of integrity. It's a process that is built on trust. That's when people decide their future to say, we are entrusting our future in the following leaders, to leaders. So it's a sensitive process. So we were shocked that the very same people that we thought would be there to protect our vote, which is our right, they turned against us. And this is how. You know, when you look at how this election was messed up, it was the first of, kind, of its kind in our history. We have had elections before, and we're not saying you can have a perfect election. Perfect, like everything is smooth. Any process, you'd have some challenges. But you look at the number of challenges, pros, pros and cons, then you make an assessment. The people who were tipexing our results, they were not mar common Malawians. They were people hired by MEC. The people who were even running away with the uh, electoral documents to go and sleep with them at their homes, they are not common human beings. They are people who are hired by, by, by MEC. You understand? Uh, the, the, the people who are even giving, in some areas, people being given three, three ballots to go and vote. These things were discussed even at Comesa and make acknowledged. So it's make through its returning officers, through its, its clerks, and through its uh, presiding officers, make decided to turn against the people of Malawi, to start doctoring, manipulating our own rights. So we are rights defenders. He said, why could they manipulate our rights? Why could they tipex our own rights? So it means the leadership failed miserably. As human rights defenders, we advised MEC before the results were announced. We called for a press briefing. We wrote a statement where we said, Malawians, let's give chance to MEC to address the problems. You understand? The we said, let's give, Madando. yes, Madando. Now, we, we, we trusted make to say okay they will address the problems the advantage is they acknowledge to say there were problems through the make chair now we said they should address these issues in a very transparent and accountable manner you understand for instance the 147 problems they should have categorized them to say okay violence related problems are these tipex related problems are this number you know all that then transparently tell us on how they resolved dando one dando two dando three up to 147 transparently as a nation but that never happened they the way make rushed even to go to court we all know that there was an injunction that they should be recount, they should be that. In, in our simple reasoning, that was for the benefit of MEC. Because MEC is given an opportunity, a, an institution, to run a free and fair election. So there are complaints. So somebody says, no, we are suspicious. There must be a recount in this specific district. What MEC should have done, actually, they should have been happy that this injunction is giving us at least an ample time to address the 147 Matandos. The make of Umbendela the, in 2014, mm -hmm. that, it was that make that actually recommended even for recount. And quarantined the results, I remember. It was in the interest of, of, of change, you know, to say we need justice. So when make recommended that, I remember that time I was an acting director, I was young then, some, some five years ago, mm -hmm. We commended Make to say yes, 
let the process be audited so that we should see the truth. But this make, instead of taking advantage of an injunction to say, oh, let's deal with these issues, it's the make that was rushing to go and vacate an injunction. Apparently, it was so surprising to some of us to say, what is make hiding? It's like you are in a mean bus, then somebody is complaining that uh, my phone is stolen. Then uh, somebody recommends to say, no, all of us should be searched here. Then the conductor partners with one of the people in that mean bus, says, no, no one should be searched. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a simple conclusion to say it means the conductor and that person, they know something. Because it's a simple thing. Search us to see the, the truth. But two people are refusing. Even if you are a baby of two, two days old, you don't need to, 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 to be a Western thinker or Eastern thinker to interpret this. So we found the behavior of make throughout the process and called for because they were not transparent in the way they did and these elections were, were actually mad with a lot of irregularities. Up to date, I'm, I'm an activist, I'm a privileged citizen. The citizens, my brothers and sisters in the village who cannot even have the privilege to come to the wrong way or to blunder to go and question things. But me, as an activist, I'm, I'm privileged to, to, to some information. But if you ask me to say, can you give me what Madandos were there within 147, I can't explain. How did they resolve, I can't explain. How do I stop the anger of a citizen who doesn't understand how the, these challenges were addressed? So the problem is, we have lost trust. As I told you, an electoral process is a process of integrity and it's, it has to be built on trust. Now, how do you trust such a crop of leadership who have messed up your, your election? In a nutshell, you are saying the elections were not fair and credible. How can I say the elections were fair and credible if they were TPEX? How can I say the elections were fair and credible if I don't know how the, the, the irregularities were addressed, those massive irregularities? So I, for one, as a person, as a citizen, as a voter, I've got a problem. And the problem is, I cannot trust the process. Mm -hmm. And you know, the MEC chair herself acknowledged, they, they are about the TPEX. They said, tell us which areas, which districts did, and who was using this TPEX. I remember I was at Comesa then. She said, no, this issue is a big problem. It's all across the country, from Kota Kota to Mchinji, from Chitipa to Sanji, literally, she, what, when she said that, I sympathized. Actually, she detained the whole electoral process. Because she, she, she was telling now the whole world to say, this problem is not as simple as you think. It is all across the country. And she wants us to believe the same process which she has told us to say it's, it's, it's mad with such, an, such anomalies. That's unacceptable. So we think she has literally failed. And beyond that, after the elections, okay, they quickly rush to announce there is an inauguration of a political party. People are complaining, people are in the courts. She goes and starts celebrating, taking selfies with party members of, of one of the parties that she has declared winner. It's a scenario of a referee. Uh, actually, she says, she says she didn't know that people were taking pictures because she was just passing by. Is the, no, no, no. I can show you. She actually paused. No, that, no, I, no, she no. was smiling the widest. <laughs> don't, don't, actually, don't, don't show me. She was don't smiling the widest. Don't, don't show me. And we, we, we refuse to believe that uh, our chair is blind. The make chair is blind. She's not blind. Okay. She saw the people actually uh, posing with her. Even, he, even she commented. One of the guys who was the presidential my, candidate. My friend Rasta. Yeah, Rasta also opposed with her. So she, she says she was just, look, lying is a very serious issue. Now, that's where, we'll, 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 we'll that's where I have we'll a problem we'll, also. We'll be back shortly, shortly, Mr. Ndam. Let's have a commercial break. Our SG Travel is here. They are the ones sponsoring this edition of First Nation. And my guest, remember, is Mr. Timothy Ndambo from the HRDC. My name is Obre Kusakala. Stay right there. We're coming back with the last segment of the program. We 
R R S G Travel. For the most competitive fares, book through us to any destination. We are reliable in hotel bookings and number one in procuring Morocco and Thai visas. Travel insurance is optional, and we operate 24/7 to meet your needs. RSG Travel is in Sunbird Longwe Hotel. For more details, call Kate on 0997-700-126 or Griffin on 0999-340-452. Email rsgtravel.mw at gmail.com. RSG Travel. Service all the way. Welcome back and this is the last segment of the program my first nation right here and my guest remember is Mr. Timothy Mtambo from HRDC. You were talking about lies that you're not comfortable with lies yeah. blah blah blah. You know lying and in leadership is a very serious issue. It you, waters, you, you don't lie? It, it, you know no one can claim to say you cannot lie. You know in life uh, the we are not perfect, as I said. Mm -hmm. I'm not a perfect human being. Mm -hmm. She's not perfect. Mm -hmm. But running under an office, as high as her office is, of course she's a judge. She, she, knows, she, uh, she knows that lying is bad. You know, literally, the, uh, she, 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 she told the nation that um, a political party, a Congress party, never complained. She told the nation. But later on, we discovered that they sent complaints to our office. Now, you are just telling me that she responded. Because, let me say the truth. The yesterday's interview was the most difficult interview to listen to. Because for me, I saw a lot of contradictions. And the, the best if you do not have something to say or offer. The best is to stay quiet. Actually, so it, lying to say she didn't know that people were taking pictures. It's how do you trust such such a person? That's why our trust is being watered down. A person who's celebrating taking pictures, a referee celebrating with a winning team. How do you justify a celebration uh, in a picture, Mr. Uh, uh, why do I? You know such positions. It's not you. You are not supposed to. To, to, she to was supposed to age. cry. No, she was not supposed to take pictures. The, when taking pictures, you know, like that, with the Elifari is happy taking pictures, smiling with a, a team that has won when she offered, he offered a penalty. That is questionable. Then you start asking to say, we are now vindicated, this Elifari favored this team. So that's dangerous. Actually, if I was her, even the inauguration, I shouldn't have attended. If I was her, I should have said, I oh, know I'm not okay. Knowing that people are angry, people are disputing the process, I should have said, I'm okay, I'm not okay. Knowing that that will save me, there's still issues out there. But I think she's so courageous. I've never seen a courageous person like her. In fact, she has said she is not resigning. But yet you went to the streets, forcing her to resign from her position as the chair of the commission at the Malawi Electoral. Uh, commission make what are you going to do? Uh, we will not relent. We are continue. We are going to continue demanding for her resignation. And you know, yesterday she committed a lot of Pharisees. One, she said we do not have a mandate to ask her to resign. I, do I, you? I, we do. We are wow. her employers. Th that's where I, employers I, I, as HRTC where I, or no as citizens. But she was appointed by the president. No, we employed the the person that appointed her. So we employed her as well. Th these people should stop thinking that like they are gods. I, I I was asking myself has she forgotten section twelve of Malawi constitution, which says which says those that are in power, those that are. are are in leadership. It's in a democracy, it's a delegated authority. We, the people, delegate that authority to them. That's why when we are voting, it's like we're delegating you to say, can you please lead us? 
And if you are, you, you, instead of leading us, you have started misleading us, we have the right to question you and to say, no, you, you better go. Because the objectives, why we gave you that leadership, you have departed from the same. So that section 12 defines the political, social, and the um, legal contract between the citizens and those that govern. So I said, Madam Jane Answer is a judge. She should know these things better than I do. She, she, she shouldn't have committed that fallacy. And she went ahead committing other fallacies when citizens are angry and citizens are actually demonstrating. A demonstration is a constitutional right. She said that is mob justice. I said, excuse me, we are dealing with a learned lawyer, a judge for that matter. Probably because some of the people you invited to go into the streets went looting. But, but th th those people, they didn't root when we were doing a demonstration. We petitioned. And whatever happens outside that, it's the responsibility of the police. Uh, to are you control. proud of what happened altogether? That after you presented a petition, how, and people are going into how the shops looting. Say, how would you say you are proud when people are doing wrong things? That's why as, as a coalition, we have, we have written a statement, we have condemned that, and we are advising the law enforcers to trace those people, and the law should take its course. We are servants of peace. We are servants of justice. So I'm so disturbed when you have you are exercising a constitutional right. Forget about whatsoever vandalism. That's unacceptable. We do not support and we condemn that in strongest terms. And we, are, we have been advising Malawians to say they should not do anything violent in our messaging, even during the demonstrations from the beginning up to the end, we kept saying that. And people maintained the peace. And people do these things even three days after. And somebody stays on MBC or whatsoever, I say, hey, HRDC. I say, excuse me, what are you talking about? Didn't you receive our rate and our roots and our time when we delivered are our petition? Are you going to pay for those damages? How? Why should I pay? Uh, did you see me damaging anything? Did you see us vandalizing anything? So those people that are propagating such a message, that the servants who would want to see every citizen quiet, every uh, organization, all of us, they want us to be quiet, that we cannot exercise our right to demonstrate because we should be afraid that they are going to tell us to say we should do this, this and that. We had peaceful demonstrations and we are going to continue having such. Somebody might be thinking to say, no, let's be saying this so that they are afraid. No, that is a constitutional right. And I would like to pass, pass this message in a very strongest terms. Human rights do not contradict. That a matter is in court does not mean all the rights have been suspended, then all of the people should be quiet. You understand? The right to demonstrate is a constitutional right. They can run concurrently? The, the, yes. The right to go to court is a constitutional right. It's not us who went to court, that the parties. So us as the citizens, we are also using other avenues to question, to, to, to achieve justice. No. But we don't want any form of violence. So the, the, the advice I would say to Justice Answer is to, she should avoid confusing people. Demonst having a demonstration is not mob justice. It's a constitutional right. And we have the right to exercise that at any time. And people went to court, they did not go to court to say Jane Answer should resign. No. They went to court addressing their own political party issues. So for us, we are just dealing with moral and integrity issues to say, ah, we cannot trust this one. As citizens, I think she must go. That's the angle that we have taken. So there is no contradiction. Mr. Ntambo, by saying you are not relenting, you're not giving up. Does that mean you're going to have another demonstration? We already announced. And the, okay, this afternoon we have a press briefing where we'll be giving uh, direction to the country to say this is the direction that we're going to take as HRDC. But one thing I can advise our leaders, no matter how big you might think you are, you can never be bigger than the correction of the people that you govern. The demonstrations we had were clear that people 
are not happy. Were you, were you happy to have all Vajnambar. those people very happy. under your wings? Because very happy. we have seen um, uh, recently you didn't have a lot of people uh, protesting with you in the roads. But this time around, yeah, we if, saw thousands and thousands. If you compare, yes. But I've always been satisfied when I, 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 I contribute to this country in any small way, whether through the court, whether through a demonstration, whether some people are stubborn, they don't want to resign, the problem is not me. Aren't you promoting the opposition political parties in this sense? No. Uh, my business is not to promote them, not to promote anyone. But I cannot stop anyone from patronizing our demonstrations. Because all of us were citizens before we become whatever we are, we are citizens of this country. And you know the funny thing with this election? Everyone complained. Even the, the, those that claim that they won, they are complaining. The they, president they opened did. the complaint. You see? So there have been a lot of contradictions. Actually, I regret that uh, there was such an interview yesterday. Because, look, the, the main chair asked, was asked a simple question about TPEX. How, how did you treat the results which were TPEX? said, no, the court would determine. Is it the court which presided over that election? It's her. So they were asking her a simple question. You are presiding over the process. How did you treat that? No, the court would determine everything she was hiding in the name of the court. Two, you, 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 you talk about um, a situation that actually tortured me a lot when I, 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 hear, I heard her speaking when she, she was basically uh, telling this country to say uh, the court would determine. Yet her institution is actually challenging the court on basic issues, irregularities, meaning they don't want that to continue. How are we going to hear the court if she's trying to stop the process of the court? So there is a lot of contradictions. And uh, I think if I was her advisor, I should have said, keep quiet. Otherwise, yesterday, she exposed herself. And uh, I believe she has made Malawians angry. You know, you are dealing with a sensitive uh, citizen here. People are very furious. And uh, w when I look in the social media, the anger is just it even just you who is furious? <laughs> Me? So all those Malawians that came, they were pretending. <laughs> Your final remark. We, we don't have time anymore. Your final remark to Malawians, and then we close. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, my final remarks to Malawians is that Malawians, let's stand up and defend our future. Malawians, let's stand up and restore and reclaim our destiny in a peaceful way. And we should make sure that whatever we do, we should remember that this is our home. We condemn in strongest terms all those misguided citizens that would want to engage in mob justice, that would want to engage in actually uh, vandalism. Any form of violence is unacceptable. As citizens, as human rights defenders, we love peace, we love unity. We will not relent until justice is seen. Uh, we will not relent until we see Jane Ansa resigns. And we are not going to relent until we see electoral justice. Because uh, uh, the future of this country belongs to us all. So we advise people to fight. Their anger should remain the same, but their anger should not be translated in violence. Their anger should be translated in ensuring that they see justice prevailing eventually on these issues. Otherwise, the Human Rights Defenders Coalition will stand with the people always and will never relent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mtambo. I appreciate it. 11th hour, we just asked you to come and then you made yourself available. Pleasure. We don't take it for granted. Yeah. Thank you. That's the chairperson of the Human Rights Defenders Coalition, HRDC, Mr. Timothy Mtambo. My name is Aubrey Kusakala, bringing you first the nation. Remember, the program is coming to you under the auspices of RSG Travel. Till we talk again another time, it's bye bye for now.
We are RSG Travel. For the most competitive fares book through us to any destination. We are reliable in hotel bookings and number one in procuring Morocco and Thai visas. Travel insurance is optional and we operate 24-7 to meet your needs. RSG Travel is in Sunbird Longwe Hotel. For more details, call Kate on 0997-700-126 or Griffin on 0999-340-452. Email rsgtravel.mw at gmail.com. RSG Travel. Service all the way.